we have just completed the non-deal roadshow, both for domestic and foreign investors. There are five key issues that I would like to touch on. The first one was the latest, where are we on corporate governance? The second one is funding status. Who are we in funding? The ASCO. The third one was a comprehensive long-term strategy. The fourth one was the cool challenging issues and what, what caused it. That was the main thing. Then the fifth issue, load shedding. Is it imminent? Corporate governance. We told investors that we continue to do the investigations and we are taking decisions whenever we find wrongdoing. We continue on reviewing the contracts, 5,000 of them, and we have covered a lot of ground because we feel that we have to make sure as the demands or as the request by the board that we have to ensure that everything is above the board. We ended up discussing the issue of uh, McKinsey and Trillion, which seems to dominate the whole stories. And we were able to answer that yes, McKinsey has committed to pay back the one billion, that two trillion has not shown any indication whatsoever of doing so, that the issue is at the high court, and that the asset for future is very happy to have this money coming to the ESCOM. I'm saying these things because from time to time, would be expected to present the developments on these contracts. But that issue that we have done is life, or what we're supposed to do is lifestyle audits. When we started, we thought by now we'll have completed this process, but it has proved quite challenging on legal processes, and we're hoping we'll be starting next week because there are certain things that needed to be done. Then it comes to whistleblowing. We have 239 cases, as it has already been reported, of whistleblowing from January as at the end of March. Out of those 75 have been investigated. And out of that 75, 39 we feel that there should be disciplinary processes. The whistleblowing facility is important for two reasons. The first thing, it indicates that the staff members are now willing to use our control systems, which is something they were not that comfortable in using. That's the first thing. But the second thing, in line with the board directive, wherever the investigation has been undertaken, we make sure that we make the necessary decision. So it's a commitment that we made to the staff that come and tell us what happened, we'll take action. The second issue is funding requirement. Since January, we've been able to raise a gross borrowing of 43 billion. We are beginning to see investors coming in, uh, both domestic and foreign. We'd like to see more, and we'll still engage with them. On the comprehensive long-term strategy, there's a lot of work that has been done. The agreement between the board and the Minister of Public Enterprises is that the process should be completed at least the latest in September. There is a mutual agreement between management and the board that things have to be done differently from now on if we are to ensure that this institution is sustainable. We have to maximize revenue. Municipal debt is a challenge that we are facing. And accordingly, we, visited, we have visited four parliamentary committees, and our story has been consistent and very same. If we don't deal with this issue, it's going to be a challenge. And secondly, investors are worried about this. They want us to show that we have the power to take decisions. And accordingly, we will deal with those municipalities that do not pay. And we have, support, we have had support from parliament. The third one is about our cost. 
We need to deal with our cost, both operational and capex, and we are looking into that. Then the issue of coal challenges and why are we here? It's a number of events that have taken place, but I'll give you just a high level as to why we are where we are. The first thing, of course, was the underinvestment in cost plus mine. That had an impact, but it had been decided upon due to capital constraints. This put a strain in the supply of coal. Secondly, there was an issue on Tegeta that did not meet their targets. And three, uh, coal mines were affected. With that, we had to get coal from internal and it affected others. But now, Tegeta is under business rescue. So that has impacted us. The previous board and management, of course, had tried to deal with the issue. They raised the issue with the National Treasury. But there were corporate governance and compliance issues that National Treasury was worried about. It took a bit longer. The new board, which came in January, by February, at least was able, through the engagement, to convince the National Treasury on approving this. This was approved. But the process of coal procurement is a bit different than, say, going to the shop and buying the bread. The process is not as simple as going to the shop to buy the bread. But we have done quite a number of things in that respect, and we are beginning to see the results of that. Then the new one that came in, as we are concluding our roadshow, was whether load shedding is imminent, is coming up. Our view is that we are producing 46,000 megawatts of electricity in South Africa. The planned and unplanned outages is roughly about 10,000 goes to 12,000 or so. And that leaves us with the resources of about 3,000 that we can make use of. We think that holding all other things constant, as economists say, we are not going to have any load shedding. We think that that problem could only take place if there are certain anomalies that can come to bear whether it's natural catastrophe, whether one big power station has huge problems and it cannot continue. But as we'll show the numbers here, we are comfortable on what we have and we'll continue to do so. Should we, should we celebrate? Should we then say we are safe? Still too early. But I can tell you without any benefit of doubt that we are safe. What we need to do is to encourage those people that have delivered this to continue dealing so on the one side. And on the other, deal with those that have done what is not needed, the wrong stuff. Because if you do that, you then create a kind of a culture that inculcate performance that is even far better than this. That is what South Africa needs. That is what South Africa deserves. And that is why we have been employed to do this job. We need to take painful, difficult decisions to do so. And there are quite a number of things that have to be done for us to achieve that goal. We need to deal with municipal debt. We need to deal with our own sustainable model to ensure that ESCOM lives another 95 years. We live a viable institutions for those that come after us. We need to concentrate on finalizing the long-term strategy of ESCOM. Because once we do so, then it will be clearer to every South African as to what the future of energy is in this country. We are confident, resilient, that we are on the right trajectory. And we know 
that if we can say that ASCOM doesn't have challenges that belong to ourselves, but we are dealing with those challenges. So as South Africans, yes, the environment is not the best, it's not the ideal, but it's not dead. It's an environment we can work and build this country through.